Okay, lumbar disc bulge or disc degeneration. I've kind of removed some parts. I wouldn't want to be this guy, but I've removed some parts so we can kind of get a better look. So here it is. Here's our intervertebral disc between L4 and L5. And that's going to be our disc at L5-S1. Let me tell you right now that if there's one disc that has our curiosity, if you've been diagnosed with a lumbar disc bulge or protrusion, it's this one right here. It's L5. So 95% of the times, it's going to happen here. What does it mean? It means that that disc, instead of sitting so nicely, just like there, has started to leak backwards a little bit more posteriorly. Okay, so I'm trying to point an arrow right there. So you can tell by the angulation at the fifth vertebrae that you might be a little bit more susceptible for a disc bulge, again, because of the way that, that S1's inclined and L5's inclined, that the disc can kind of move back posteriorly. Fun fact, so get this, with over 3,000 people in, a, in an examination, and 3,000, over 3,000 people went through imaging, and they were all asymptomatic. 80%, 80, had disc degeneration, and 36% had a disc bulge. Now, those were all 50 years or, uh, or older. But still, that, that tells us a lot, all right? That's a lot of people, over 3,000 people with that study, and 80% of them had disc degeneration. So it's quite common. So how can we help? So I've noticed that what we can do is help improve the stability in that area. Again, as you might have heard me say in the cervical disc bulge video, I like to try to get stability where disc bulges are at because you don't have the natural stability that your body's trying to provide. Um, there are some key muscles like the transversus abdominis, as you can see right there. That is a very key local muscle that I like to, so to speak, turn on and begin the process of stabilizing your lower back. I hope that helps guys with a lower back disc bulge or disc degeneration. Thank you guys.